Johan. Edgecombe County, Board of Education, come to order. This time, Mr. Evans, would you please come forward as a bring the boys and the public up to date on while we're here. Step over here, I'll give you your notes. Can you do it? You all right? Just one of those over there. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to the Rocky Mountain Event Center and Sports Facilities Company for allowing us to use this wonderful facility here for this very important meeting. Um, both for our board, but mostly for our citizens that are here tonight. Uh, just to remind you that Session Law 2023-37, also known as Senate Bill 382, was passed on June 12, 2023. 
It includes a provision that says that the school districts between Nash and Edgecombe counties will change and move to the county lines, which is referred to as the county line merger. This is to take place July 2024. A transition plan must be submitted to the State Board of Education by November 15th of 2023. Tonight, both superintendents and their staff will present their respective parts of this transition plan. To the board, uh, for you board members, you will have the opportunity uh, to ask questions and make comments. Uh, I recommend that the board members hold your questions until the end of the presentations, as some of your questions may be answered in the latter part of the presentation. Also, when you do, please make sure that you pass along the nearest microphone to you so that both uh, those who are here in the audience as well as those who may be watching remotely will be able to hear you clearly. There will be no action taken on this tonight. Instead, each board is asked to consider approving the plan by the adoption of a resolution at their regular meetings in November. Though there is not a place on the agenda for public comments tonight, we do encourage citizens who have feedback to share that directly with the appropriate school or county official or to attend the appropriate governing body's upcoming meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I believe we have first up uh, Edgecombe County Schools, Dr. Andrew Brown. Good evening. I want to thank everyone for being here and uh, just welcome everyone. To begin tonight, um, I'd like to take a moment of privilege to ask for a moment of silence if we may. Yesterday, Chester County Public Schools lost uh, an employee, um, a teacher at Southwest Edgecombe High School, Amani Key. And I'd just like for everyone to take a moment of silence to remember her and her family in this time of need. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for being here tonight and um, just would like to share with you the amount of hard work that's gone in to putting our plan together both for Hesper County Public Schools and Nash County Public Schools. It has been a tremendous honor to work with all of the administrators and educators within both of our school districts and board members and community members and attorneys who have worked and helped us put this plan together. At this time, I'd like to recognize anyone Hedgecombe County Public Schools or Nash County Public Schools who's worked on this plan to please stand and be recognized by the boards of the community. Please stand. Thank you for all your hard work on this, on this plan. And uh, all that hard work that I have seen, I know that's what excites me assures me that we will be able to make all the necessary arrangements to make sure our merger plan is successful. And as we have spoken so many times before, Dr. Ellis and I have spoken about the teamwork that's been involved with this, and I think as a board you will all be very proud of how hard everybody's worked together to make sure it's a cooperative spirit to make sure this plan is successful moving forward. In that note, I know that we have a lot of logistics to present to you tonight, a lot of different things that we want to make sure that we're successful with. We've also begun to shift the conversation to what we believe is one of the most important things that we're going to be talking about. Actually, the most important thing we're going to be talking about is the education of our students that will be involved in the virtual. And it's actually, it's absolutely imperative that we continue that conversation involve our community and our parents and children in moving forward to make sure as that merger occurs, we provide the very best education possible for our students who are involved in that. On that note, again, thank you for being here tonight, and I will turn it over to Mr. Ronnie Sharp, who will provide you with the presentation and also cover the uh, highlights or at your, at your seat. Thank you. Like 
Testing. Didn't have to stop at all. Now, I'm going to point it in that direction so that I can see the presentation. If you don't mind, just give me just a brief moment here. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for your presence here. Thank you for your support throughout this entire process. Thank you for your input and suggestions, your concerns, and just for supporting our youngsters in Nash and in Edgecombe County. So good evening to our county commissioners. Good evening to our county commissioner chair, Ben Wiggins, uh, Mr. Rowdy Davis, Mr. Shonda Washington, chair of Nash County Public Schools, Dr. Evan Wilson, our Vice Chairs for the Board of Education and the Board of County Commissioners, all of our board members for the County Commission, as well as for the Board of Education. Good evening to our attorneys who have come to support us tonight. Good evening to our superintendents, Dr. Stephen Ellis, Dr. Andy Bryan. Good evening to all of our transition um, participants and those supporters who have encouraged us and worked with us very closely, both from the Nash County side and from the Edgecombe County side during, during this entire endeavor. We welcome you. My name is Ronnie Sharp. I serve, I serve as director for uh, redesign for this process and transition. And uh, we want to present 48 as it relates to the mandate components contained in our county line written plan of transfer. This overview will follow, that will follow, will represent our goal of streamlining our efforts to highlight the main components in our transfer plan. You will note a couple of QR codes here, and those QR codes will take you uh, to a more closer detailed uh, examination of the written plan of transfer. The QR code on the left is the actual uh, 248 written plan of transfer. The QR code on the right provides a, an overview of the presentation that is occurring tonight on this stage. So for those who wish to uh, acquire additional detailed information regarding the plan itself and these processes, feel free to peruse those uh, documents through that QR code scan. Staffing. Edgecombe County Public Schools invite staff to apply to continue to serve in our Edgecombe County community. An expedited application process and acceptance process will be utilized for staff members who are currently serving at Fairview, D.S. Johnson, John, uh, Baskerville, and Parker Middle Schools, including a series of talent recruitment events, which we started on the 27th of September at D.S. Johnson Elementary School. Our school structures consist of mainly regarding feedback from the community, from our community design team meetings, um, from our county line merger planning committee meetings, etc. And those recommendations were that we would maintain the current school configurations of the four newly acquired Rocky Mountain schools for the 2024-25 school year. Any more so pending that board approval, our students will be assigned to these schools using the 2023-24 Nash County Public School attendance boundaries. And let's briefly examine these elementary and middle school structures located in the upper left-hand corner and the bottom left-hand corner of that slide that designates school structures. Fairview will consist of pre-kindergarten through second grade, just Johnson third through fifth grade, Baskerville, and you'll notice, if you see down there in parentheses, pre-K pending licensure, that means that there are no current pre-K classes 
at that site at this time, um, but we will be examining that. Parker Middle School consists of 6th to 8th grade. Our 9th grade student center uh, will be located either at the uh, industrial incubator site in the northern part of Rocky Mountain, which is about 5.3 miles from Edgecombe Community College or North Edgecombe High School. Our next slide, high school students. Our ninth grade high school students will have a unique educational experience at either the Edgecombe Industrial Incubator or North Edgecombe High School. Students can also apply at Edge Academy of Health Sciences or the Early College High School. Our ninth grade students participate in athletics at um, North Edgecombe High School and students entering 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th grades will have the opportunity to continue as legacy students within the Nash County Public School System until they graduate. 10th to 12th grade students who would like to become Edgecombe County Public School System attendees will attend North Edgecombe High School or apply to attend Edge Academy as rising 10th graders. Transfer of assets. ECPS continues to work closely with the Nash County Public School System regarding the transfer of assets. Uh, items purchased with state funds in ECPS and NCPS are working collaborat collaboratively to transfer these items to ECPS. Items purchased with federal funds, on the other hand, at ECPS and NCPS are working collaboratively with the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction and the U.S. Department of Public Education to determine the reasonable fair market value of these assets which depreciate. And how Edgecombe County will properly select the assets, they will work with us to determine those processes. Technology. Edgecombe County Public Schools is working with the National County Public School System to examine our internal budgets to ensure that our students have the technology that they will need in order to be successful. Transportation, very important piece. ECPS will receive buses from Nash County Public Schools according to the current legislation. And we operate uh, approximately uh, six, five passenger buses, which is the number of seats on those buses. And Nash County Public Schools currently operates a fleet of passenger buses that seat 72 students. And the ECS, the ECPS maintenance facility can only service 65 passenger buses. Therefore, we are exploring an option of partnering with local LEAs uh, with those fleet buses that are 65 passenger buses to receive the additional 72 buses from NCPS and provide us with the 65 passenger buses so that we will be able to transfer our students based on our needs and the accommodation um, maintenance pieces that we have in our unit. As for our academic programs, we're excited to share that ECPS, our focus on innovation and strategic design of our schools, and our academic programs are done with our students and families. Therefore, if you desire to become a member of this effort, um, please scan to join the QR code that you see on that slide and that will take you uh, to an area where you can actually click on that piece to become a member of that program and you can uh, work with us to make sure our kids receive what they need in order to be successful. Uh, if you will note on that slide, you will see that uh, BCPS, BCPS is in the process of creating these design teams. Uh, through pre-K and 2, 3, 5, 6, 8, ninth grade and beyond as we acquire those students moving forward in the uh, years following 2024-25. As for our community involvement piece, ECPS is committed to transparency and continuous communication with the community as we transition our families into our district. We just want to highlight a few of the things that we are participating in, and this is not an inclusive list, but it just highlights just several of our uh, major components. 
Uh, we are currently and will continue to um, host monthly communication meetings through our community meetings, uh, our superintendent advisory councils, which will begin on the 19th of this month, uh, our signature learning experience design teams, and the parent parental participation through those teams to access to those QR codes, the alignment of our school calendars with Nash County Public Schools and Edgecombe County Public Schools, Public Schools working closely together to make sure that our parents are able to, regardless of where their students attend, um, work through those calendar issues uh, in an aligning, uh, in a cohesive manner. We also are providing welcome packets to our families um, at, at um, just different events and also with carpool and things of that nature to make sure that they feel welcome in our system. Our merger plan of transition timeline, um, the main one that we want to highlight is obviously November 15th. That is the date when the written plan of transfer is due to be submitted to the North Carolina Board of Education for approval by the three, I'm sorry, by the four boards. Uh, we want to highlight just very quickly October 25th, and we will ask you all to please feel welcome and feel free to come and attend to support us uh, as we meet at Baskerville Elementary School on the 25th, and again on the 29th of November, we will meet at Parker Middle School. Our last slide simply repeats that second slide, which provides an opportunity for uh, and a closer examination of um, the written plan of transfer 248 um, on the left hand side and the presentation that we're conducting currently um, here. So I turn it over to my um, art and my family and I thank you for your attention and your support. Good evening. Um, as Dr. Ellis said, I'm Victor Ward Sr., Director of Transition and Safety for Nash County Public Schools. Um, protocol has already been established in the welcome, so I would just say good evening again. Um, if you would turn your attention to our plan on the Nash County Plan of Transfer, I believe that's your second packet if you have in front of you. What we will do, we will go through our plans. Um, most of you have had the opportunity to, to review this. And so what we will do is just go through the plan um, as is by page number. I would dare not read it to you, but I will point out and highlight certain aspects of our plan. As we go through this plan, you will recognize that our plans mirror each other 
in structure and format, uh, with the exception of our plan, of course, is primarily the relinquishment of, um, of course, um, property assets and, of course, students transferring. So that will be primarily the difference, as you will see. But you will notice that we very our plans in structure and format. Uh, we begin our plan with, a, of course, a detailed table of contents for you, as you can see outlined on page one and two. We provided you with an executive summary. This pretty much just put in context, the historical context of both the districts in terms of how we evolved and how we got to um, become Nash County Public Schools, Edgecombe County Public Schools, and also it just mentions this process as well. On page four, um, we provided you, provided you with a forward statement regarding the agreement between all four boards. Page five and six provides you with our core responsibilities of our superintendent and also of each of our departments and our divisions. Page seven and eight, of course, you see out loud, we have our transition planning teams um, listed by department and title. Page nine, which is titled Overall Impact of Our Data, as you can see um, that currently, well, these are not current numbers, I will say that these numbers will change uh, prior to us submitting our plan November the 15th. So this just provides you with a guesstimate of the current number of students um, that, are, that are enrolled in each one of those schools. Also, in the second column, which the number of students that are domiciled in Edgecombe County, which brings us to our post emerging the last column, um, providing you with the number of how many students that may remain, or an approximate number of students that may remain in um, Nash County Public Schools post emerging On page 10, we provided you with the number of staff that's housed in each facility, in addition to the Teacher Resource Center and also the School Nutrition Building, which you see a zero in the column for School Nutrition Building because those staff members have already moved to another location within our district. On page 11, this is the fiscal impact for Nash County. As you can see, there is nothing in state funding. Um, local funding, of course, you know, current budget for Nash County is the 25 million minus the 2 million for um, that will be reverted to Edgecombe County, leaving us with 22 million uh, postal merger. Federal funding, current nine, and of course the three million dollars that will revert to um, Edgecombe County. And here again, these are um, projected estimates. Page 12 provides you with a list, a breakdown of PRC codes, which are program report codes by our staff members. Uh, for example, 001, those are your classroom state positions. Um, currently in 2003, 2022, 23 school year, we had 705 positions, um, less than 587 positions, which will have a reduction of 118 positions um, at the end of the year. And this breaks it down, this gives you by position and also dollar allotment for us. On page 13, you will see a more detailed breakdown of the certified and classified staff members by state and local funding um, that will be for part-time and full-time. For instance, I'll just take one example, Basketball Elementary School, currently 6.2 positions, um, and that includes arts, music, and PE. One EC position, 3.3 .3, uh, positions for includes guidance media, social workers, and two principal for administrators, I'm sorry, and principal and assistant principal. And of course, they may very much certified four time local, and they're uh, certified last column, four time, part time, those that are in federal positions. And that is um, by each school. On page 14, you will see a summary of federal assets. As Dr. Ellis alluded to, to earlier, you do have a packet with a detailed breakdown of all inventory assets um, by school. And this is just a brief summary or overview by school, by PRC code, again, program report code of all the federal uh, programs. And if you look down to the, on the bottom left-hand side, the PR descriptions are provided there for you in regards to the federal funding, the source of funding, funding stream, 
Um, the, the theory, of course, is Title I, 105, is the CIA, CIS, so forth and so on. And back at the top again, it's broken down by each code, or PRC code, and also it gives you the dollar amount. At the bottom, it gives you the expectancy, life expectancy, because that factors into in terms of the dollar amount or the price of those federal assets in terms of their longevity, life expectancy of their longevity. Page 16. Communi communication and engagement. Um, from the onset, as, as Mr. Sharp mentioned earlier, we have been very transparent in this process as much as we can uh, with our internal and external stakeholders and ha having community forums, um, getting input from our stakeholders, and also meeting in the communities here from um, board members and so forth. And so this has been a very um, open process from the beginning where we have engaged not only um, Hedgehog County communities but also Nash County community members as well in this process because we want to make sure that we have input from all, all that will be involved in this process moving forward. So we've launched a, a couple of community meetings ourselves for our, our students in terms of uh, where about 400 students will go. We're going to have a place for uh, the upcoming school year that live in the Nash County side. So I just want to again give a shout out to Ashton County for their community meetings and partnering with them. It's been really great as our superintendent said. Page 17. Student transition. Uh, this section pretty much outlines our student transition process as Mr. Um, Sharp alluded to earlier in terms of our students in 10-12, in terms of those legacy students remaining in Nash, will have the option to remain in Nash County if they so choose. Our plan um, is to we'll follow, and you will see on the next page, page 18, which um, we've outlined starting in July, our student transfer timeline for this process. However, we have been um, really careful about what we've said in the community because we really want to wait until the plan is approved before we give any detailed information about students being, in terms of the process and how it's going to work. However, we have provided an outline here in terms of how we think the process will, will be moving forward. But again, we just want to make sure that we have approval before giving any definitive answers um, to the public. As you can see, our timeline on page 19 will run through uh, 2024. So once the process has started in terms of, we don't want to use the word demerge, uh, growing together, that's a part of our campaign as well, going forward together to be more specific. And in April we would have, I'm sorry, in March, we would have probably 100% uh, of this process complete in terms of getting uh, information from our parents as well as students that will remain. Uh, that process will hopefully be uh, finalized by March of 2024. Also within the transition plan, it speaks to our student records, how the records will be handled um, on both sides with Edge Home and Nash County Public Schools, making sure that those records are secure and that they're transferred in a proper and orderly manner. On page 20, um, it speaks to the safety and security of our schools in terms of the safety equipment that will remain in those schools. Uh, the cameras and the electronic safety equipment with the exception of one school that is a federal item that may have to be purchased, but um, other than that, the safety equipment as is mentioned in our plan will remain in those schools. Um, transportation, again, Mr. Sharp um, alluded to that in his PowerPoint earlier, in terms of our transportation records working together to resolve the bus issue in terms of the 72, 72 passenger buses and the 66 passenger buses, in terms of how those buses were working with other uh, counties to get those 72 passenger buses transferred out in exchange for some 66 passenger buses so that they can, we can accommodate um, H1 County Public Schools and their transportation needs. Um, technology. Um, technology will come up under the federal assets as well in terms of um, the equipment and devices that will be in those buildings and the funding coming up on the cost of those. And so that pretty much is in the spreadsheet. So that will fall upon the federal assets of this particular spreadsheet here as well. And again, our technology departments, they have been communicating with Edgecombe County as well to make sure that this is a um, 
to have a stream, streamlined process as well. And page 24 just pretty much provides you with a dollar amount to break down my school in terms of those student devices, staff devices, the cameras, the scanners, the interactive boards and televisions and printers that are located in each one of those buildings. And again, it just provides a dollar amount for those particular schools. And page 25 brings us to the conclusion and attached you, you do have on page 26 an appendix um, which gives descriptions of some of those assets as well. Also in the electronic version, we will have a link to the spreadsheet with a detailed summary of all the um, federal assets that you have before you that will be included in this plan electronically as well. In the last page, of course, is the signature page. Once approved, all four boards will have the opportunity to sign at that time. I believe we have, a, uh, we have an expedited process that we've already started to ensure that uh, individuals uh, in those four schools can apply for jobs. And we've reached out to them as well through communications to make sure they understand that process. And uh, we've worked with Dr. Ellis to make sure that that process is outlined to them so we can get that done as quickly as possible. Because we understand, we understand that uh, they need to have answers as well. Uh, we've actually already started that process, and uh, we're, we have not set a complete timeline for that, but we're working on it right now so that hopefully we can give people an answer as quickly as possible, which is beyond what the normal process would be because we know this is such an unusual situation. Um, as we hire people, we're gonna, as we interview people in this expedited process, we're going to hire them as quickly as possible which would mean even this year if we can get that done, meaning the end of 2023. Thank you. Yes, sir. Ms. Melfield, you got a question? since legislation came out, and uh, from what uh, I can gather, this information um, has been discussed for a long time. But the time has been put in to make sure the plans are, are, are done correctly, and there's been a lot of work done by both sides. Would you like to care to 
Because I'm interested. Come up with this. One plane. You all you talking about putting them together for one plane. It should be one plane. And uh, I, I have another teacher assignment. They had uh, parents rose up against what that school board was trying to do, even with their own student assignment. Uh, that's something that uh, you need to pay close attention to and have parents involved so they won't come up and say, well, sometimes parents don't think about things until it's a decision has been made. And try to minimize that. And, um, Teacher assignment. Uh, you know, those schools on the East Coast County side, which are now in the Nash County uh, school district, uh, have anything, have you discussed anything with them? Well, but they remain in Nashville. Those that are working in schools in East Coast County, but they still be there. Let me, let me go back to your student assignment piece to begin with, and then I'll talk about the, uh, the uh, assignment of employees as well. Uh, to begin, um, we, knew, we knew that with the merger, that it was important that we try to give stability to parents and students as much as possible. So in those schools, we are maintaining the same attendance zones uh, that they're currently under right now as we start in, in July of 2024, when Edgewood County Public Schools takes over for those schools. The process for uh, employees, as I outlined a little bit uh, previously, uh, we're, we've started an expedite, uh, expedited process right now to hire those uh, employees that are currently working in Nash County Schools and those schools uh, so that we can give them closure and we can move forward because it's important for us to get uh, great teachers, and many of which are already working there right now, and make sure that we support them in the transition in those schools. I think it would be great if those teachers can work in those same schools, and we've already told parents and students that they're going to be attending those same schools as well that they are right now in the same feeder patterns, which should create some more stability for them. Thank you. 
don't know how to talk in the mic. Just about to block the mouth. Uh, they're used to that. But uh, <sighs> minimize the issues with certain hit. Yes, sir, I think that's a great idea, what you said. And I think that we will make sure I, you can never over communicate. And I think we will give everything possible through various means and mediums to make sure that we get that message out there. And I think you're exactly right. Good afternoon. I am getting texts and from parents and staff very appreciative of the plans and the details. However, they said if you're keeping the kids first, please consider athletics because there is a great importance for the elementary school tournament, basketball tournament. What will happen with some sports activities for the kids in terms of the lab? And it's alluded to D.S. Johnson, I believe. So I'm just relaying the question. Well, you, thank you. Thank you. And, and athletics is very important. And we want to make sure that uh, students, regardless of what level they, they are, elementary, middle, or high school, that, that those opportunities are still available to them. And we're going to do everything possible to make sure that that happens because athletics is part of the educational experience, and we're going to keep doing that. The microphone. Mm -hmm. I hate intelligent people. Uh, and it's gotten that state, as has been stated before, we've been in conversation. 
We're, going to have to, we're still working on that number uh, with the transition and um, also want to make sure that we have a complete um, budget that will take that into account. Uh, it's difficult to do that right now uh, as we're working on numbers and also we're trying to still figure out the uh, federal uh, uh, funding question with the equipment and we want to make sure we have a number on that as well as we move forward. Um, uh, just plan going forward as someone said earlier, plan is due on the 15th of November, but we know a lot of the work that will continue beyond that as we work uh, through our process and the budget process as we go into next year. So by the 15th, you still won't need to include anything about your budget in the plan? We will continue to work on the budget, but I think that budget question and process will continue as we go into our local budget process as we go into the new year. I think we've had some conversation about, I did hear a presentation in terms of, in terms of there were uh, maybe some students be, beyond the ninth grade of what we're talking about transfer to two people in the household. And, and whether they, if the parents wanted those to attend that kind of school system in terms of how we might have it, you have responses to that. And let's say we got it. A child that's attending, maybe every junior high, whatever, uh, below the grades that we're talking about. We talked about they might want to stay into the last kind of school system, and we, we, we talked about how you might become Do you recall that conversation? You speaking about my grade or the 10th, 11th, 12th? We were talking about the 8th grade. We might be talking about the 8th grade that want to stay in the school system. We've had some conversation on that, I believe, in some of our sessions. Dr. Fred, you want to ask you how we talk about? So, um, we talked about the transfer process, process though, reference children who are 10th and 13th grade. And then you have those who are in the 9th grade who will be remaining in Edgecombe. And so there's a likely situation that may occur where there's a family who has a child who's in the 10th or 11th grade and have another child who's a rising freshman. And so the conversation was around what will we do if a family member says, I do not want to be caught in a situation where I have one child in Nash, one child in Edgecombe, and trying to attend athletic events. And so this is a conversation that we have put on the table, but it's not a decision that we have made yet. It's still one of the nuances that we really need to talk through about the student transition part. But I believe I can say this, Dr. Ellis, uh, from from your perspective that we want to understand those special situations that exist like that for families and make sure that we're trying to work for the best interests of families. And everything that I've heard from Hedgecombe, they want to do the same. I just want to put it on the table because we might have a lot of parents that are in their position and they, they probably want some response to it. Anybody else with any other questions? My question is actually based upon, we talked about the legacy students, I guess those were the 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th grade. Um, there is a per pupil allocation.
explanation is different between Inchcone and Nash. And according to what I'm reading is that Inchcone is only going to pay a certain amount of that per pupil allocation. The difference in that per amount, where is that coming from? reason that we're here because of that gap money that you're talking about? Yes, sir. Okay, so we're not talking, it's called, it's not talking about no gap money. Okay, okay. Uh, I think that the, the intent of this agreement is that these students will stay into the National County School System, okay, with the, uh, whatever the plan speaks to that we're going to send. Uh, there'll be no gap money. Not coming from this point. I will say that's been the agreement that we work on through the process. That Gary understands that's where we are, and uh, we wanted to accept it based on everything else that we've been able to agree to. That the gap funding will not come from Edgecombe County. If you look at the three-year process, it's a pretty small number, and we're prepared to entertain and take care of it. So. Thank you. Yes, sir. And I, that is one of the things that we have agreed on, both from the kind of business standpoint, and we go in terms of our conversation on there. Another conversation. I mean, uh, you have a great time. I just have one final comment that I'll be making, and that is I hope all of us will put the students first and get our personal feelings of whatever we have, uh, any kind of personal agenda aside, and let's educate the students in both campuses that we'll be proud of. And when economic, as we look at economic development, they, they look at these issues what kind of young people do you have that's qualified to work in this particular industry that we are taking a look at your district? When I say district, I'm talking about National Edge Company. So let us all work to make sure that we put the children first, that when they come out of high school, they are eligible to do one or two things, go directly to a job, or go to a community college, or college. And that would make this area great. And I've, I've seen uh, 17 county members working together in Ohio, with Columbia being the capital and also the, the uh, head of that, those six, 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 17 counties, maybe. And they are doing wonderful in economic development and educating the children. Mr. Wiggins, if I may, I'd like to address the board member there, but I'd like to address our whole board. And what I'd like to say is uh, to our board members, the most surprise I have had in the small groups that we have met, I don't know how many times, about every two weeks for a number of is the way that uh, this unique situation has been handled. I will assure you, as our board member, that it has always been very cordial. I haven't heard a crossword whatsoever. And each meeting I leave, I leave with a big smile on my face, quite frankly, because it has gone so smooth. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of amazed me. Uh, this has been a controversial subject for a very long time. But I'll tell you, when it's got time to get it done, uh, particularly the school side of this, the board commissioners didn't have that much involvement in the details as we should have. We're responsible for the funding, as we all know. 
But uh, they have all worked together extremely well. You couldn't have asked for it to go any smoother. And I just want to reiterate just how good it has gone and how proud I think every board member would be if they had said in all the meetings. Thank you. George Thorne, District 3. Evelyn Powell, District 1. Ms. Wilson. Evelyn Hitchcock County Board of Education, representing District 1. Nash County Board of Education, I'm LaShonda Washington, Chair, representing District 9. Mike Dunton, Vice Chair, representing District 6. Evelyn Bullock, representing District 10. Thank you, Dan. Dr. Chase, District 1. Zach Gray, District 8. Dean Edwards, District 2, Southern Park, Nash County. 
Don't show up this with five. Dr. Robbie Davis, uh, that commission for District 7. Gwen Wilkins, Nash County Commissioner, District 6. Wayne Outlaw, District 5, Nash County. Sue Leggett, Nash County Commissioner, District 4. Dan Cohn, Nash County Commissioner, District 3. Fred Barrowfield, Nash County Commissioner, District 2. Marvin Harrington, Nash County Commissioner, District 1. And you see how good a clerk that we have on the Nash County side, she makes us sit in order. Is there, is there any other business to come before this joint session? Are there any other questions? Any other business? Hearing none, I was at motion for the Eskimo County Commission Sewer Questions? All in favor, let me know by the vote time. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, the Eskimo County Commission is adjourned. Thank you for coming for so much for attending.